Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to talk about coordinate reference systems and how they're handled in QGIS. To begin with, we'll look at how they're handled in ArcGIS. And this comes up a number of times. It might come up as a display for your map data frame. We'll have to have a specific coordinate reference system. And then each layer can also have their own coordinate reference systems. And sometimes you might want to project data from one coordinate reference system to another. But in any of these cases, you're going to have to choose a coordinate reference system that you want to use. And both ArcGIS and QGIS have standard dialog boxes for selecting coordinate reference systems, but they're organized a little bit differently. Let's look at the coordinate reference system for a data frame in ArcGIS. We'll look at the properties of the data frame and then coordinate system. And you'll see in ArcGIS, the uh, coordinate reference systems are organized in folders. The primary distinction is between geographic coordinate systems and projected coordinate systems. I'm going to assume that you know what these terms mean if you've been working with GIS for a while. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about them, but a geographic coordinate system basically refers to latitude and longitude. The units that define a particular point on the Earth's surface are expressed in angles from the center of the Earth. Projected coordinate systems, on the other hand, are measured at a distance from a standard easting or a standard northing line. So those units are actual distances in feet or meters or something like that. And as a result, because the Earth is round and any kind of surface that we want to create a map on is going to be flat. These projected coordinate systems are only valid for a small section of the Earth's surface. Once you start moving away from the standard easting and standard northing lines, you'll start getting distortion in the map. It won't quite fit on the flat piece of paper. And usually they work pretty good for a small area, but the further you get away, the, the more distortion you're going to get. So these are only good for a small section of the Earth. So inside geographic coordinate systems, the second level in ArcGIS, you're looking at a specific area on the Earth, or there are some that work for the entire world. But basically, the only thing that you're choosing is the datum. And the datum is a mathematical model of the Earth's surface. And before humans started going up into space and could get really good measurements of the Earth's surface, most of these datums were also only valid for a small portion of the Earth. And so usually these datums are centered in a specific area. For instance, in North America, or we'll use a lot NAD 1927 or NAD 1983. They're the two most common ones that we'd use in the United States. So all you really need for a geographic coordinate system is to know the datum. Projected coordinate systems, however, are a little bit more complicated. In ArcGIS, they're divided up into categories like the national grids, state plane, which is commonly used in the United States, especially by local governments. Each state, or at least the bigger states, are divided up into several different grids, each with, each with their own standard northing and easting. Another very common one is UTM. And so under UTM, then they start looking at geographic areas and also some specific datums. And then within those are categorized northern and southern hemisphere, and then by the zone. The UTM system divides the Earth up into 60 different zones. Each zone is 6 degrees of longitude, so 60 zones of 6 degrees each is 360 degrees, which is the circle of, around the Earth. Now you can also search for a specific coordinate reference system. For instance, you could type in zone 11 and hit the search button, and then you'll be restricted to only coordinate reference systems that contain the text zone 11. And if you expand one of these datums under UTM, for instance, you'll see there's only one under NAT 83. In the WGS, there's probably going to be two. One in the Northern Hemisphere, that's Zone 11N, and one in the Southern Hemisphere, that's Zone 11S. Or if you wanted to search for, for instance, in Albers projection, you can type in Albers and then search. And you'll see there's a few under national grids in Australia and under state systems as well, in the U.S. mostly. If you know a little bit about the coordinate reference system that you're looking, you can find what you need. You don't have to search through this entire directory structure. You can also, if there's some that you use a lot, you can click Add to Favorites. And then under the Favorites folder, anything that you click Add to Favorites will, will show up there. So if there's, you know, oftentimes in your area that you're used to working in, there might be two or three or half a dozen different coordinate reference systems that you're used to working in, that you use a lot. And so you might put those into your Favorites folder just to make it easier to find. Now in QGIS, do something similar. If we go to Project Properties under the CRS tab, we'll find something similar in that the first division that they're organized in is in Geographic Coordinate Systems and Projected Coordinate Systems. And just like in ArcGIS, under Geographic Coordinate Systems, all you need 
is the datum. And you'll find some interesting ones in here. For instance, you'll find one for different planets. Pluto 2000, Uranus, and Venus. So if you work for NASA and you're making maps of other planets, you can find a coordinate reference system specific to other planets, as well as other places on the Earth. you find that most of these that refer to another place on the Earth will have an older date, 1934, 67, 55, 72, etc. And that's because once we started going up into space, we really got some good measurements of the Earth, and we have some good datums that will fit the entire Earth. So we don't have to have so many specific for different places on the Earth's surface. Under projected coordinate systems, the next division is the projection. So we have Albers equal area, azimuth equal distance, Cassini, I'm not sure what that one is, equidistant conic, so there's a bunch of different projections in here. And one of those projections is Universal Transverse Mercator, or UTM. And then within UTM, they're organized by datum. So I'm not sure what AGD is, but if you're used to working in the U.S., you'll find some of the standard ones that we use, like NAD27, NAD83. And then after projection, they're organized by zone. So the organization is a little bit different than ArcGIS. And I wanted to include this lecture so you won't be so confused when you start working with QGIS and you need to select a coordinate reference system. And we can also, just like ArcGIS, you can search. So for instance, if you just want to search if you're working in Colorado and you want to work with Colorado State Plain, but you're not sure what the name is, you can just type in Colorado. And State Plain happens to be in the Lambert Conformal Conic Projection, but then you can choose Colorado North, Colorado South, Colorado Central, etc. And if you work with these a lot in ArcGIS, you'll recognize some of the terminology. Now in QGIS, you don't have to select favorites. There's automatically going to be a box up here that includes recently used coordinate reference systems. And that'll include the ones that you most commonly use in your work. So you don't have to go and specifically select a favorite. The ones that you use a lot, ones that you've used most recently, are always going to show up in here. And so you don't have to search through the entire set of coordinate reference systems. Now I wanted to show you something else in this directory that I've included for you guys. That includes the data and the different map files. You'll see in the shape file, if you're used to working in ArcGIS, you're used to seeing a shape file. One of the files has a PRJ extension. And that just includes information about the projection for that data. Now, if you were to look in that QGIS for ArcGIS directory that I included for download with this course, and you look at the shape files that are included, you'll see that each shape file has one file that has a PRJ extension. And if you're used to working in ArcGIS, you've seen those. You probably know what it is. It's the projection file that tells ArcGIS exactly what projection the data is in. And if you take a look at that, all it is is some information that includes things about the coordinate system, the datum, the spheroid, the prime meridium, the units, etc. But now that we've loaded the same shapefile into QGIS, we get another file in here that has a QPJ extension. And that's a different file that QGIS uses to define the projection. And we can open that as well. And it includes pretty much the same information. Information about the coordinate system, the datum, spheroid, prime meridium, the units, etc. Then it also has some other things about authority. And there are several different organizations that define standard projection systems around the world. EPSG is the most common one. In each one of those standard coordinate systems, and there are several thousand of them, and EPSG has a number associated with it. And that's what these values represent. Because QGIS is really standards based, it relies on standards that have been developed by other organizations for these coordinate reference systems. ESRI, on the other hand, has their own proprietary system for defining coordinate reference systems. And so they're kind of doing their own thing and ignoring what everybody else is doing. And that makes their projection file a little bit easier to understand, but it also makes it less flexible because they don't correspond to standards that are set by other people. All right, that's it for coordinate reference systems. Hopefully it's not confusing. The whole topic is a source of confusion for a lot of people. But it is an important topic that you always have to keep in mind when you're working with geographic data. All right, thanks for listening. Just a reminder, this is one lecture in a course of about 80 similar lectures. So if you like what you hear, there will be a full-blown course called QGIS 3.0 for GIS professionals. It's going to be available in mid-December on udemy.com. I also have a few other available courses that mostly have to do with web programming. So if you're interested in web programming for GIS applications, I have an introductory course that's available now on Udemy. And this course really is a broad overview. It's about 13 hours of content, but it's a broad overview of web programming specifically oriented towards GIS applications. So we'll talk about HTML and CSS and JavaScript and some PHP and SQL as well. But we'll also talk specifically about the Leaflet JavaScript API for web mapping. 
the TERF JavaScript API for spatial analysis, and the PostGIS database for storing and analyzing data on the server. And then I have a more detailed course. It's also about 13 hours. It's just specifically about leaflet and TERF. And I have a third course that's about four hours now, but I have a few lectures that I'm going to add to it. It'll probably end up being five or six hours, but it's about issues specifically related to creating mobile GIS and mobile mapping applications with Leaflet. So if you're interested in web programming, I'd encourage you to take a look at these courses. Right now you can use the coupon code COURSE3, all capital letters, to get any of these courses for $20. That's an 80% discount off the list price. So thanks again for listening, and keep an eye on my YouTube channel if you want to see more content that's going to be coming up.